Hello everyone and welcome back to another Pricey P Roblox tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be all about module scripts in Roblox. So the first question that comes to mind is why module scripts? Don't we already have enough scripts out there? We have the local scripts and we have the scripts. And the answer to that question is instead of keeping different copies of the same script inside your game, you want to have a single place to keep a single copy of the script. The next question is, how do you create a module script? In this example, I'm going to create it inside the replicated storage. So let's go to replicate storage and we're going to click on the plus sign. If you don't see your module script in the drop down, you can search for it here. Otherwise, if you see it on the drop down, you can just select it. In a way, module scripts are different than local scripts and scripts because local scripts and scripts they automatically run on their own when you enter the game but module scripts do not run on their own they have to be called either from a local script or from a script so let's take a look at an example let's say we come into our module script we're gonna say print hello and then a module script must return a value. So we're going to say return um, true. All right. And now if I go and run, and I'm going to take a look at my output window, I don't see anything in there. There is no hello in there. And the reason for that, again, is module scripts, they don't run on their own. They have to be called from a script or a local script. So now let's go and create a script in the service script service to call this module script. Now to access your module script, you're gonna to need to use the require keyword. So I'm gonna declare a local variable. Let's call it module. And I'm gonna set it equals to require, that, that is the keyword. And then I'm gonna put the path to my module script in the inside the parentheses as a parameter. So the path is game dot replicated storage dot module script. Let's take a look at what we have so far. We're calling the module script from here and the value that the module script returns is gonna be loaded into our module variable here. So let's take a look at our mo module script it's returning true. So first it's gonna print hello, and then it's gonna return the true value. So our module here is gonna contain true. It's gonna be set to true. So if you go and you say if module, then print module returns true. All right, now if you run it, you should see something in the output window. And there it is. So the first hello here is from the print hello inside my module script. And the second line here, module returns true. That's the value that I got back from my module script. It got loaded into this variable. So this variable now is a Boolean variable. It's true or false. In this case, it's true. So if true, then it prints out module returns true. Okay, so far so good. With module script, you can e either return a value or you can return a variable. A variable is al also considered to be a value. So you can have something like this, declare variable local a equals to 10. And then you do return a plus two, let's say, right? So now back in our script, uh, we, we declare the module script here already. So our module now, our module variable now is gonna contain 10 plus two, which should, should be 12. So let's just print it out and let's make sure that is what we're getting back from our module. Print module. 
let's take a look and there it is it returned to off okay so that's the limitation of module scripts is it can only return one single value how do you get around that so people get around that by declaring a dictionary so they got to have something like local module equals to the curly bracket. Now, module is a table. It can be an array or a dictionary. And then you just return module. So you're returning the dictionary. And the dictionary can contain multiple entries. So each of those entries are going to give you a different value. So what we need to do here is to load our dictionary module. So one way to do it is to initialize it. As you declare the dictionary, you can initialize it by doing this. For example, I'm going to put in uh, up equals to north, comma, down equals to south. So now I have initialized my dictionary with two entries up is the key north is the value down is the key south is the value now if i go back to my script and again this module script now is going to return the the dictionary so it's going to return the whole thing here now let's go back to the script and let's print module dot up Let, let's say uh, we can print both, I, I guess, module.down. All right, so a lot of times people think that when you, you, you're working with modules, you, you must have, you must declare a variable here, right? And you must use module.up, module.down, because it's, it's what you do with mod module scripts. Um, that's not true. Uh, it's it's basically you're, you're returning a dictionary and to access the dictionary entry this is how you access it you, you use the dictionary you use the dictionary name followed by dot and the key inside the dictionary so up and down they're not function names or anything they're just the key inside the dictionary now if we play it should print north and south and there it is, north and south. As you can see here, even though the rule for module scripts requires that you return only a single value, I was able to return two different values here by using a dictionary. And depending on what I need from my module script, I can either use module.up to get a value or module.down to get another value. Let's go back to our module script and we're going to add another value. So for example, here again, we have uh, initialized our dictionary to up and down. And now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to add another dictionary entry. So for example, I'm going to say module, which is the name of my dictionary dot part, which is a new key. I'm adding a new key to my dictionary and I'm going to assign a value to that. So let's say I'm going to pick a part from my workspace here. Let's say I'm going to pick the platform. So I'm going to say module.part equals to game.workspace.platform. And now if I go back to my script, to the main script that calls my module script. Now if I go and I say uh, module dot part I believe I called it dot brick color so basically I'm gonna change the brick color of that part that brick color whoops equals to brick color and we'll just pick the new color I think black is fine so currently my let's take a look Currently my platform here, right? The color is red, so I'm changing it to black. Let's play and see what happened. 
and there it is, it has been changed to black. As you can see, you can use module scripts to define variables that can be shared everywhere inside your game. But most of the time, people use it to define functions. So to define functions, I'm going to start out with declaring an empty dictionary. And to add my function to the dictionary, I'm going to start with the dictionary name followed by the key. So for example, I'm going to have a function to paint a model. So I'm going to call it paint model. I'll set it equal to function. And inside here, I'm going to put in the script to paint a model. So I'm going to have to pass in a model here that I want it to paint. And here is the script that I've inserted inside my function to paint the model. It's a very basic, simple script. Uh, basically, I'm passing in the model, so I'm getting all the descendants of that model. And I use the for in I pairs loop to go through each of those models to paint them blue. And if, if the part inside that model is not, uh, I'm sorry, if an object inside that model is not a part, then I'm going to just print got a model. So if I, if I find a part inside the model, I'm going to paint it blue. If it's not a part, it's going to print got a model. And in our main script, we're going to call that new function that we have created. So we're going to say model dot paint model. And we're going to pass in a part. The part that I want to pass in is I'm going to pass in this model, which is the left staircase. So that part is game dot workspace dot left staircase. Let's play and take a look. And hopefully our left staircase gets painted. And there it is has been painted blue. And by the way, if you look at the output window here, you see there's a message that says got a model. And let's take a look at our left staircase model. There is another model in there. So when it hits this model, it printed the message. And then it also painted the parts inside that model. So all these five parts are the five steps they got painted. And this one, we got a message. Now let's go back to our module script. So this is one way to declare our function. And to declare our function, we can do it also another way. We can say function and model, which is the name of the dictionary, dot the new key. I'm going to say paint part this time. So this function is just going to paint a part. And I need to pass in the part here. And basically, this one is just going to say part dot brick color equals to we'll just pick a new brick color dot um what 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 color is my part right now it's red so I wanna pick a different color how about dot uh we don't want blue because the steps are blue how about dot white all right, so now let's go back to our main script and put that in. Um, I might, might as well paint uh, the right staircase as well. So it's going to be right staircase. I don't want it to be left out. And now we're going to paint the platform using the new function that we have put in. So it's going to be module dot paint part and we're going to paint the platform. So it's going to be game dot workspace dot platform. Let's play and take a look. So there it is. The left staircase is being painted. And now the right staircase is being painted. And next is the platform. It turns to white. And again, we got a model on the left staircase. The right staircase does not have a model. The right staircase just have five parts, so that's why we're only getting 
That's why we're only getting this one message and not two messages. And there are times when you use module script not to share your script everywhere, but just to make your main script looks cleaner. So in that case, you can just go to your main script and add a module script. That is the same script I had from the replicated storage. So now I can just go ahead and remove this one from the replicated storage. So instead of all having all these code inside the main script, my main script now looks much cleaner because I'm hiding the code inside the module script. Let's play and take a look. It should still work the same. Oh, before we do that, let's go back. When you do that, you got you got to change the, the path name here because my path name is still pointing to the one in the replicated storage. So now I want to change this to, and basically it is the script dot module script. And now it should work. And there is the left staircase is being painted. I got the message here and the right staircase is being painted and the platform got painted. So that is our lesson for today. And that is all you need to know about module script. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial. If you would like to learn more about dictionary, I recommend going to our pricey P Roblox YouTube channel. Click on the search here and enter dictionary. Hit enter. I would start with this first lesson here, number 64, all about dictionary tables. And then if you like, you can browse around. There are other tutorials on tables and arrays that you may be interested in. Until next time, we hope to see you in the next tutorial.